The U.S. Marine Corps has a plan to turn the MQ-9 Reaper into a stealth aircraft. And what's more, they plan to do it without changing a single body panel. And that, it would seem, is thanks to the Reaper Defense Electronic Support System, an underwing pod developed by General Atomics and L3 Harris that, at least in theory, absorbs the electromagnetic energy being broadcast all throughout the battle space, reads and interprets those signals to triangulate their source and determine which ones are coming from radar arrays, and then broadcasts a signal back to those arrays that fools them into thinking they never saw anything at all. Or, as Marine Corps Commandant General Eric Smith put it, it turns the MQ-9 into a black hole in the sky. Now, this could have huge implications for the future of the MQ-9 Reaper fleet and the future of military aviation as a whole. So let's talk about what this system is and why it may be a glimpse of the future of stealth technology. More often than not, people tend to think of stealth as a singular technology, usually the exterior shape or design of an aircraft that's meant to deflect radar waves away rather than directly back to that radar receiver. But that really was only true for a short time, and today, what we consider to be stealth is a broadly encompassing term that includes a whole slew of design elements, production methodologies, even combat tactics, and in recent years, increasingly, electronic warfare capabilities. Now, electronic warfare, or EW, comes in many shapes and forms, but often when we talk about EW, we're talking about either jamming or spoofing. Now, jamming is just what you might think. It is inundating a radar array with a bunch of white noise and static nonsense that makes it all but impossible to differentiate between all of that noise and a real target. But spoofing is a lot more complicated than that. You see, radar arrays work by broadcasting electromagnetic energy, or radar waves, out into the air, and then waiting for some of that energy to be reflected back at it, or at its receiver, which could be located elsewhere, so that it can interpret those signals to determine that there is actually something there to target. And spoofing reads those signals being broadcast at it, and determines what type of signal it can send back to that receiver to fool it into thinking there's no target there at all or, in some cases, that there are lots of targets just in other places. And that is what the Reaper Defense Electronic Support System pod aims to do. And that's a really big deal, because the MQ-9 is not a stealth aircraft. Like many of the drones and other ISR platforms the U.S. military fielded all throughout the global war on terror, the MQ-9 was designed to fly in uncontested airspace, which means it's pretty easy prey for just about any adversary with even the most basic integration air defense capabilities, which is why we've seen a number of Reapers go down around Yemen in recent months. Now, if you wanted to redesign the MQ-9 as a stealth aircraft, you'd really have to start from scratch, and it would cost a fortune, something the U.S. military is not aiming to do. But by instead using a spoofing system like this to fool radar arrays into not seeing the aircraft there at all, you could dramatically increase the survivability of these platforms and get them right back into the fight where they're most needed, in places like the Pacific, where the Reaper's onboard intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities could be absolutely vital for a fight over the open ocean. Now, it's very important to remember that this sort of system would never be as effective as a dedicated stealth platform like the F-35, which actually leverages multiple overlapping stealth technologies to mitigate detection and targeting from really every angle of observation and just about every radar free frequency you can think of. But while this wouldn't turn the MQ-9 into an F-35, it would make the MQ-9 a whole lot more survivable. And that capability doesn't need to be limited to the MQ-9 either. And the hard truth of the matter is, we are reaching a point of diminishing returns with our stealth aircraft designs. That is to say that we are very good at making an aircraft stealthy in shape, but enemy air defenses are continuing to improve and mature. And as they get better and better, we will need to rely on other technologies to make sure our stealth aircraft stay survivable. And because of that, we're likely to see systems like this equipping not just all non-stealth aircraft, but very likely stealth aircraft as well. Because at the end of the day, radar arrays are just computers that work on the same ones and zeros as everything else. And if you can send them a signal that confuses them, makes them think there's no target there at all, 
Well, it doesn't matter how stealth you are, the radar array won't see you. And the benefits of a system like this only compound when you inundate that enemy airspace with a huge volume of real and phantom targets, using systems like the ADM-160 Mauled, or Miniature Air Launched Decoy, to broadcast prominent radar returns of aircraft like B-52 bombers and F-15E Strike Eagles, even though they aren't even there followed by very real F-35s and other similar platforms that are exceedingly difficult to detect and target in the first place. And what you end up with is a whole mess for air defenses to try to contend with. Now, it's still very early days for this Marine Corps MQ-9 program, but we do know for a fact the Air Force has been working on that same pod since at least 2021. And if you ask me, this is only the beginning.